looking at the operational performance of the business, I'm going to start off with human roll products. This is a bit of a timeline taking us back a few years to um, look at what priorities and what themes management lived to uh, since 2019. Um, 2019 was a very difficult year for the business. Um, both the rolling and extrusion businesses had a significant disruption to volumes for, for various reasons. Being heavily fixed cost businesses, we really needed to focus initially on getting the volume back through the business. I'm quite pleased to say that uh, I think our record speaks for itself since 2019. Uh, as a result of the volume pressure on the business and the losses incurred in 2019, uh, cost reduction became a key focus, of which a headcount reduction or Section 189 of the Labor Relations Act process was the, the biggest single contributor to that, uh, to that those cost reductions. Uh, also, at that time, we embarked on a significant restructure and consolidation of the extrusion business, uh, as well as making sure that we protected our cash, uh, which, with the benefit of hindsight now, going into 2020, was a really sound and prudent uh, approach because of the unpredicted, not predicted uh, impact of the, tw the 2020 COVID-19 crisis. Moving on to 2020, from turnaround, we moved into survival as the world economy kind of shut down uh, to some extent in uh, from the sort of end of the first quarter of 2020. Um, we continued to uh, have a reasonable demand for products through 2020, uh, and it was really all about keeping the plant going during that uh, very difficult disruptions the lockdowns, the um, working from home impacts, and keeping employees healthy and safe was a real challenge in, in 2020. Uh, we continue to protect our liquidity and also take whatever measures we could to reduce costs in the time of very constrained volume throughput uh, uh, during that period. Flexibility, making sure that we were able to respond to customer demand and uh, short-term changes in our order book and in the plant and being able to respond to uh, changes in customer orders um, and various employees getting infected, uh, having teams that were isolated, uh, people getting sick, required a whole lot of flexibility during the course of 2020. 2021 uh, was really a rebuilding recovery phase. Uh, we can look back now and say with a reasonable degree of certainty that uh, 2020 was the low point in the COVID experience. Uh, order book certainly uh, was a significant improvement on 2021 over 2020. The import duty on rolled products into the local market certainly impacted local demand. Uh, in line, too, with the uh, significant impact of the loss in, or, or the, the moving away of the beverage industry away from plastics and glass to recyclable aluminium. We focused quite extensively in 2021 on consuming market scrap and recycling. Employee morale was a, a real challenge during that period, particularly uh, I think virtually no employees were unaffected by family and friends who, and, lo and the loss of loved ones and the loss of family income from uh, the, the economic problems and the emotional problems and the mental health problems related to COVID. At the same time, we continued to experience the second, the third and the fourth waves in 2021, and that resulted in significant employees being, numbers of employees being unable to work on site. Uh, that put a lot of pressure on employees who were able to come to work, who remained healthy. And so there was a lot of difficulty in maintaining manufacturing continuity. We also undertook a, a very important 12-day maintenance shut 
a shutdown to where we do plan maintenance on our key machine centers, upgrades, technology upgrades, improvements, and so on. And the business definitely since the end of uh, quarter one, beginning of quarter two, when we did that shutdown, uh, the, the, the operation, the plant has performed better. We did definitely see prices and margins improving and increasing during the course of uh, 2021. Uh, and particularly in light of the fact that our um, exposure to the, particularly the United States automotive industry increased as we pushed more and more volume of higher value products into that export market. In 2022, our focus remains on getting back up to our full volume potential. Uh, We certainly have started to capitalize on a number of pricing opportunities where there are opportunities for us to use our flexibility to shift volumes into more profitable markets. Uh, At the same time, there is excess demand for beverage can material, and we are able to capitalize on that. We certainly started to focus on improving our efficiencies and throughput rates so that we can maximize the volume of beverage can material that we're able to make. Automotive sheet will continue to be an important focus for the business, uh, while at the same time keeping a very tight uh, eye on cash flows, bearing in mind that the RAND value of aluminium has continued to rise. We're now at record levels of in the dollar price of aluminium and likewise in, at record levels of the RAND aluminium price, which puts significant pressure on the absorption of cash into working capital, uh, both our receivables, our uh, inventory and our payables are swelling up quite significantly or have done so over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Thanks. Can we move on to the next slide? So the operational highlights in 2021, as we've alluded to a couple of times already in this um, presentation, significantly higher volumes, 35% higher than full year 2020. But still a few disruptions in the business. COVID-19 continued to play havoc with continuity at a micro level, at a team level. We continue to have teams coming on and off site as a result of being having to be isolated and quarantined due to COVID-19. Uh, the social unrest, um, we do believe that Peter Maritzburg was kind of an eye of the storm in the COVID, uh, in the social unrest that hit South Africa uh, in July of 2021. We were also impacted by quite a significant cyber attack on the Portnet Durban, plant, uh, Durban Harbour, where we, for about a, a week, we were unable to ship material through the port. That has an impact of pushing uh, that disruption back up the, the flow of materials all the way into our plant. We, when we can't ship metal out of the plant into the harbour, the physical space starts to constrain operations in the plant, and likewise a weak uh, disruption on cash flows has quite a significant impact on the business. I've also mentioned already the planned maintenance shutdown conducted successfully in the first half of 2021. Um, We also are very pleased to say that uh, in the second half, um, after just below 200,000 tons in the first half of 2021, we got very a lot closer to 230,000 tons annualized, which is still a little bit short of our record of 2018, but the second half of 2021 was a very good volume period. Our safety record we maintained, although a slight uptick in the numbers and the frequency rate of injuries, we still pleased with the overall level of our um, and the safety with which our employees experience when they come to work. Uh, as I said, um, you know, demand continued to strengthen throughout 2021, uh, and particularly in the local market with the imposition of import duties where imports of competitive products became much more difficult during the course of 2021. We're also quite pleased with the progress that we've made uh, on our high-end, high-value products into the United States. Uh, still a very small volume, but uh, going forward, we'll 
be much more meaningful. The highlights of um, 2021 for human extrusions was definitely a significantly lower cost base, lower overhead costs. Um, we continued to experience a few costs related to maintaining the uh, mid-rand site and uh, invoices that only came through from 2020 once we were closing our books uh, on the, the, the sale of that, that property. There were quite a lot of security and other issues, but we did uh, definitely show improved manpower productivity in Peter Maritzburg as the efforts of management uh, consolidated performance and th uh, throughput efficiencies in, in uh, the Peter Maritzburg two presses. The business has definitely taken a back to basics approach, focusing on cash flows. In other words, making sure that um, the flows between payables, inventory and receivables uh, is much has much tighter controls than in the recent past. Um, there are there is a is a significant shift in the ability to extract better pricing in the market. Definitely in the past year or two, the supply and demand dynamics in the South African market as the imported uh, extrusion products have become less competitive has allowed us to um, capitalize on a number of pricing opportunities and to bring more volume to the exist through the existing presses. Costs will always be a significant focus for any manufacturing business in South Africa, and Uleman Extrusions is definitely no exception to that. Uh, thanks, uh, Luke. Moving on. Right, getting to the end of uh, the presentation and looking at the prospects going forward. Um, in human role products, we'll continue to focus on capacity utilization. We're definitely looking to getting above 210,000 tons for the full year. Uh, we've put, put out there that we're looking to get uh, above 212,000 tons for, for this year. Uh, the order book is quite healthy. And as we've seen in the recent past, our ability to achieve these higher levels of volume is largely determined by our performance in the factory, uh, which is a good position to be in, particularly considering that market prices uh, have risen and continue to be at the firmer levels than we've seen in the 2015 to 2020 period. Uh, local sales are particularly buoyant. Uh, we're seeing uh, significant demand, and I would expect that most of our audience today would have seen the greater presence of beverage cans, both in supermarkets, soft drinks, as well as uh, liquor outlets in terms of beer packaging. Extrusions, we will continue to consolidate the improved performance, uh, and certainly we are expecting good cash flows and profits out of that business uh, in line with what we've seen since 2020. Um, in terms of the group, I think uh, as we, Mark and I have both mentioned already in this presentation, the pressure of the rise in the commodity, the RAND commodity price, the RAND aluminium price, definitely has uh, sharpened our focus. We, we uh, really have to be extremely vigilant in terms of our liquidity, our focus on moving inventory through the business quickly, our ability to secure optimum payment terms from our suppliers and the shortest possible payment terms from our customers. In terms of uh, prospects and, and profitability for the year, we are a little bit more optimistic than we were this time last year, uh, having seen prices and the contracts that we've already concluded for the year ahead are looking a little bit better. Uh, but as I always say in these presentations, subject to the currency playing ball, uh, as you saw in the last year, the RAND strengthened by about 1 Rand 50. Um, if the RAND strengthens by another 1 Rand 50 uh, from the 14 Rand 70 average of 2020, uh, sorry, 2021, we will, that will erode most of this, this optimism we're feeling on, on dollar pricing. There remains a risk in the business thanks to the RAND LME prices, as we've spoken about quite a lot already, and that does have the risk of constraining volumes uh, should our balance sheet uh, get a bit more stretched than it is right now. Uh, 